Welcome to this video for the presentation and a brief explanation of the EMF Planner software. What is EMF Planner? It is a software for the calculations and estimates needed in order to analyse and report the impact of high frequency electromagnetic fields, which is generated from wireless telecommunication systems. This software came about thanks to the partnership between the Russian company Center of Telecommunication Technologies, leader in telecommunication system planning with 20 years experience, and the company Pugliese Progettazioni, which has also been working in this sector for 20 years, especially about consulting for wireless telecommunications and the evaluation of electromagnetic fields. It is in fact an international adaptation of a previous Sanzone software from CTT. This software has certain characteristics and features that make it fast and easy to install and manage with an, with an intuitive interface and rapid setup time, which means the user, after a brief training session, can start working quickly and dynamically, thanks to the interactive geographic databases. You don't need to upload maps or models, it is already in the interactive database. Data import and estimate export is extremely easy, which means you can personalise your electromagnetic limits depending on the various regulations in force. This means it is a software that allows you to create calculations for small to medium electromagnetic telecommunications systems all over the world. The electromagnetic field level calculation is carried out by the point source method according to the recommendations ITUT K.70 2020, which incorporates all previous ones and transposed equivalently in EU countries, for example in Italy by the standard CEI 211-10 and its appendices. Just to be clear, the electromagnetic field, as you know, in high frequency, is calculated only in terms of electrical field as volts over meters. As well as the electric field, it also calculates the exposition. The normalized sum, as it is sometimes called, as in the formula shown here, so the simultaneous exposition which is significant when there are different frequencies. So, after this brief introduction, we'd like to show you a little how the software works. It's very exhaustive, so there is a lot to discover, but we will just show you the basics. This is the software interface. On the left-hand panel, you can see a number of menus that will take you to the relative page. We'd like to just mention that here you can customise your settings, so choose the work folders where you want to save the antenna patterns. Here we can choose different operators and various websites where you can consult their maps. This is the main page where we will be inserting all the transmitters that make up the radio based systems for telecommunication. We are talking about mobile phone operators but also TV, radio, Wi-Fi and so on. Right, let's insert our data. So let's enter all technical parameters as type of service, frequency, the transmitter power. The SIDL converter is really helpful. We can convert from watt to dBm and so on and all the parameters, azimuth, antenna model. We will insert here the antenna radiative pattern that we or the planner has chosen. On the right here you can see the irradiation pattern. The data and the gain is already given by the pattern but we can edit it here. The height of the antenna, all the parameters, the electrical and mechanical down tilt. Here, if I enter here three carriers, the total power of the antenna port will be automatically calculated. Something that is really important is that here we can specify the attenuation factors fixed by regulations for each transmitter. For example, the Alpha 24, as well as the attenuation factors that are used for the latest technologies LTE, 5G, so FTDC and FPR, 
which are the factors that take the signal duty cycles or the beam forming into account. So we can edit these individually. Let's use a prepared file for the following. Let's take a look at the personalization of the electromagnetic limits. In this table, you can add your limits. Here you can see the Italian limits, but you can change these to whatever you want. Here, there are some other limits from other countries that have already been uploaded and made available by the software creator. So, we update the limits or just change them whenever we want. Now we're going to load a ready project with a number of transmitters with various providers. Each transmitter has its own set of parameters with its own antenna. One feature that is really useful is that you can instantaneously see the antenna pattern envelope, which is essential for new generation 5G antennas, or when you need to calculate the envelopment for evaluation of the down tilt. We will now select some antenna patterns, for example, some for UAE. Here you can see the irradiation patterns. We can select the tilt that we need and we can create the envelope. You can see it here now. You can see the word envelope here. Going back to the previous file, you can see how the radio base evaluation is be beginning to take shape. Actually, let's start from the beginning. We have just selected one radio base, but we can enter and select an unlimited number. We can do a multiple radio base analysis. Now I'm going to focus on a single one. Here we have three directions, 0, 120 and 240 degrees. I can add geographic coordinates. I can personalize the area I'm looking at. I can add various visual effects for the background, like satellite view map, this is from Google Satellite, or open street map. There are a lot of these base map options. I can move my antenna like this to wherever I need. I can do that either by dragging them manually or by changing the geographical coordinates. I can add buildings either by inserting them from the open street map or better, I can upload them with a file KML. This is a file that has all the heights and specifications of buildings in a specific area. We can provide this file for you if you need it. This file is created by a layer, a vector shapefile layer. It has to be converted to KML for it to be read by the software. Here we've already loaded it. On this bar, you can turn off or turn on the various layer views. Once the buildings have been identified as a certain height and of a certain size on the ground, you can move them around. You can delete them or edit them. Now we'll just do this quickly to show you. We are adding the text, the height and the quota as attributed to it. As you can see, there are some pre-registered quotas, thanks to the DEM from online databases, given to you by the software automatically, which shows you the details for the quotas in the area, the cells that you have chosen. You don't have to load any additional files. The DEM should have some local databases. We are going quickly here, but we are going to calculate the classic diagrams as the horizontal and vertical cuts. So we can add all the requirements to get a three-dimensional cuts according to the different electromagnetic limits. Here, for example, I have four limit values that I added earlier, which are the Italian ones in this case. The software allows you to add up to four of these. So with a click, I can start the calculation to create these cuts. The software now is working. We will have the horizontal cuts within different limits. We can personalize these with colors and so on. We can just take one limit, here six volts per meter, and I can calculate the tridimensional space. The software will take the volume and create a 3D image. We can rotate it or make it larger. You can export that image to show it, for example, to your client. We have generated a PDF file. Let's open it up. 
As you can see, it's just a simple PDF file and you can send this to clients who don't have the software and they can open it and appreciate the three-dimensional aspect of the radio base electromagnetic evaluation. So this was about horizontal cuts, but we have the same features also for vertical cuts. We have the possibility of creating the vertical diagrams. We've created here a simulation of the pre three previous directions, so 0, 120, 240 degrees. We can evaluate any other direction, such as 90 degrees for example, not taking into account the attenuation value, as per some technical regu regulations. Or I can just use the wall's attenuation. For example, in Italy, as stated in some regulations, which have been fixed, there is a cutoff frequency at 400 MHz for attenuations of 3 or 6 dB. As long as there is a wall with no window in the line of sight between the radio base and the evaluating point. So in this case, it would look like this. Outside the building, the attenuation would be the same. Inside, the attenuation would be higher. You can also export the file into AutoCAD, so a DWG file. Here we can add the size and the scale, and the software will export everything into DWG. One feature that is extremely interesting is that we can create a template for reports using shortcodes. We can set up a Word file with shortcodes, which makes report creation very fast. So we can create this document in a single click. We add our data, so the type or name of the radio base, other information, such as you can see here, and each feature lets us generate a shortcode in a separate file. So here, for example, for the horizontal cuts, or I can create a report with a single click, and as a result, all the tables and fields are filled in according to the different shortcodes entered. So instead of the original shortcodes, you can find data and see all the graphics. Here, the data sheet of the radio base, here the horizontal cuts, here the vertical cuts. Here there are some more of the electromagnetic distribution, the antenna patterns report, and every other shortcut we want to enter in the final report. They will allow you to fill out the report almost in one click. Another very important evaluation that is often requested is the calculation of electromagnetic field in some specific points, called checkpoints. We can create points on the map just clicking on the map with a mouse, and their geographic coordinates will appear here. And for each of them, so for a given geographic position, we can enter one or more height values for the evaluating point. Here, 12 meters, for example. I can run the report again, and if it falls inside a building, I can add the increased attenuation. For each point, therefore, we can enter a measured electromagnetic field value. So at the end, when I have a complete set of checkpoints that we can see like this, by just clicking here, we can obtain all the electromagnetic field data for these points at various heights. Here it's not filled in because we didn't add a measurement. And here there is the simultaneous exposure percentage according to the parameters I added at the beginning. Another feature that is very useful is that I can select one point and see how the electromagnetic field changes depending on the height. Here we are inside a building with its attenuation, a building that is 5.5 meters tall, and the electromagnetic field is lower, as long as the point is inside the building. If we consider outside heights, the electromagnetic field increases because we are no longer inside the building, and thus the electromagnetic field is higher. I can change the range of height assessment and the graph changes simultaneously. The software's characteristics are extremely useful to make evaluations and optimizations. Again, here is the vertical diagram, for example. Here, just moving your mouse, the screen shows dimensions changing in terms of distance from the electromagnetic transmitter and along the ground. We can set this dotted line at a certain distance from ground to evaluate the extension of vertical cut and see if it touches or enters inside the forbidden zone. So we can see easily if a magnetic lobe interferes with an occupied space under a predefined quota. This has been just a brief introduction. Thank you for your attention and please don't hesitate to contact us for further information.